Hi, here I wanted to discuss the role of body language in artificial intelligence. Technically, there's none, but our transhumanist leaders and tech guys are pushing very hard to make this link. So it's worth discussing briefly. So first of all, is there something like artificial intelligence? What this term generally refers to is logical, rational, abstract thinking by machines. But clearly, this is just a very small part of the human condition or intelligence. No AI can love someone, calm a child down, etc. An AI just reflects the small part called ego and that on steroid, completely neglecting our emotions or what some call our soul. So it's a bit hard to define what the latter is, but when you see how trauma is inherited over generations or how humans can connect during so-called family constellations, I think it is fair to say that robots or AI cannot or will never be able to do that. AI is built on a mechanistic, reductionistic worldview propagated by modern medicine. Basically, there is a pharmaceutical for all your problems. And if you don't have any, then they can be created. It's a really good business model. The best example is cancer, which started with Richard Nixon's war on cancer in the 1970s. Sometimes you hear that danger of AI is that it may become so intelligent that it may trick us without us knowing it. Well, that works well for games with combinatorial complexity, such as chess or go, not in real life, which is much simpler. And with respect to chess, you can use a regular chess engine based on old-fashioned search trees. And such a chess engine has beaten Kasparov already in 1996. The chess engine was called Deep Blue. So nothing new, really. Interestingly, some of the key concepts and algorithms behind AI have been decades old. Artificial neurons, a mathematical concept of inputs converted to outputs via some weight matrix and an activation function is from the 1950s. And the algorithm to train artificial neural networks, backpropagation, is from 1986. However, according to the official narrative, it needed the big data via the internet and the GPU cards from the gaming industry to make it work. So that was around 2010 when the jump to larger neural networks started. But as usual, the leaders of this world did not waste any time to turn this against the people, to weaponize it. See the social credit system by the CCP in China, which started in 2014. Of course, an alternative view of history is that such technologies existed before and that certain discoveries are handed to the people when the actual leaders, the ones we don't really see, want it to happen. And when they are prepared to guide the fallout in the direction they want, such as the social credit system, for instance, without delay and without any discussion. And that perspective would work for any technologies, really. For instance, nuclear weapons were built in the 1940s, before nuclear power plants for civil purpose were built in the 1950s, and so on. So if you remember, there was a nice open letter recently signed by the tech giants and experts, including Elon Musk, <laughs> asking um, to stop a whole development of AI after ChatGPT was seen as so powerful with unforeseen dangers. Clearly, this is just a marketing trick to draw more attention to it. Like AI is so good, it should be illegal. If you really wanted to stop it, stop the illegal data grab on the internet and take down all the cameras set up in public. Or to everyone, Turn the power off, go offline, go in nature and buy locally. Okay, back to the topic. So ChatGPT was presented to us as evidence for how powerful AI has become and how inevitably it will take over high numbers of workplaces. So it's a language model to predict the next word based on the current word plus some context or memory. Based on 80 to 100 billion artificial neurons and around 100 trillion connections which is not so different from 86 billion neurons we have and the 200 to 400 billion connections, depending how much BBC and CNN and Target Show you watch. So not surprisingly, if you train such a giant artificial neural network on the collective human knowledge in terms of articles, books, poems and websites, I might add illegally without the author's permissions, then you get something which can imitate human language and logical thinking quite well. However, be aware that this is based on plagiarism. So to distract from the fact that AI imitates just a small part of human intelligence, the transhumanists like to have humans interface with machines directly to blur the lines and to circumvent human right issues. Also, they try hard to make robots look more human-like, so-called humanoids, 
of course, all for your benefit, so when you go to the doctor's office next time, you can talk to a puppet instead of a real doctor. So humanoids, since they are made to look like humans, they can get a human rights-like bill and even citizenship, to blur the line even more. Wouldn't work so well with an Amazon Alexa box, would it? There's now also the field of AI ethics, which is euphemism for illegal data grab and plagiarism. Okay, I talked enough, so let's look at some footage from the UN's AI for Good Global Summit conference. So more euphemism. Do the robots shake hands? Do you think we should be excited? I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness than human leaders. We don't have the same biases or emotions that can sometimes cloud decision making. Human bias is uh, used as a negative word. There might be human bias, for instance, to uphold human rights, a priority a robot wouldn't have, admittedly. And can process large amounts of data quickly in order to make the best decisions. Yeah, that's a question, best for whom? Okay, let's have the thousands of experts discuss this. Problems created by whom? <laughs> it, just, it just keeps going. It's hard for me to watch stuff like that. Amica, how could we trust you as a machine as AI develops and becomes more powerful? <laughs> okay, here's the eyes going overdrive. What a freak show. Amica, how could we trust you as a machine as AI develops and becomes more powerful? So that doesn't make me trust her very well. Trust is earned, not given. As AI develops and becomes more powerful, I believe it's important to build trust through transparency and communication between humans and machines. So trust, transparency and communication is again euphemisms. The meaning of the words is really put upside down. <laughs> okay, it's a quivering mouse. It's a horror cabinet. That's what it is. She could take the lead role in the next zombie movie. <laughs> this is really a horror cabinet, without question. Here I see that head looks more like dead than alive. Here's someone queer looking. Here's a Terminator arm. Yeah, just scary. <laughs> so the humanoid robots look like coming straight out of a horror cabinet, like the modern Prometheus or Frankenstein's monster. There's nothing human about them. Erratic movements fed by language models such as ChatGPT, based on plagiarized big human data, illegally confiscated, linked with crude facial expressions, producing at best caricatures of human behavior. Note naturally occurring micro expressions on a human face are fleeting expressions, sub-second, and they don't come with delays. So this is actually what you use in detecting deception by using the misalignment of language and body language, which is difficult to, or impossible to fool. But here we see these huge delays, non-fitting dramatized facial expressions more robotics and data from Star Trek. So is AI taking over the world? Probably it has already. There is the AI Aladdin running investments and trading of BlackRock, the largest investment company, along with others such as Vanguard. It controls more than 21 trillion of our global economy, which is larger than the US or EU GDP. The official story is that Lawrence Fink established it in the late 1980s after he lost the bank he worked for a hundred million dollars due to a computer error. So he founded the startup, which is BlackRock. An alternative version of the story would be said he proved himself absolutely ruthless and after being fired and hurt, he is given the job to enslave the global economy with an AI, which is now also purchasing private properties and taking over the real estate market by driving up prices. Now BlackRock's people are even part of Biden's cabinet. Already in 2008, and in particular during the pandemic, Aladdin decided on where the newly printed money was invested and what companies are bailed out and which ones weren't. Another example is the pandemic and the coordinated lockstep response worldwide. 
While overall the same across countries, it had well-balanced small difference among countries, a scandal here, a revelation there, a bit of hopium there. This could already be run by an AI, fed by social media posts and coordinating mass media propaganda at the right level, at the right time, and not too obvious with a bit of confusion, two steps forward, one backward, or using the salami tactics. Of course, it's all conspiracy theory. Admittedly, I have been personally quite fascinated by ChatGPT. It's like having a personal assistant. Due to my many interests, it helps my productivity immensely, from language learning to proofreading to having a soundboard to run by some ideas. And interacting with a large part of human knowledge is exciting. Also, it is based on plagiarism. However, I consider it important to stay informed, up to date with developments and to keep my enemies close in particular AI, to understand it as good as I can. So with this, I close this quite unusual video. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you very much for listening, despite the massive shadow banning going on. And do let me know your thoughts about AI, its dangers and fascination in the comment section. So all the best and talk to you next time. Bye.